Remnant 2 offers a pretty interesting spin on Dark Souls-style action games. The fundamental gameplay mechanics harken back to the Souls series, with a limited checkpointing system, a high level of challenge, and a reliance on memorization for progression. But Remnant is first and foremost a third-person shooter, with only limited melee elements. Plus, the entire world is randomized, with player goals, story elements, and level layouts set according to a procedural generation system. Now, that was largely true of the first Remnant title as well, which shipped in 2019. This time around, though, we're getting a current-gen-only Unreal Engine 5 title that should hopefully take effective advantage of much more powerful console hardware. So does the new randomly generated dungeon crawler offer visuals befitting its 9th gen heritage? And can the game's procedural systems deliver a satisfying adventure? Remnant 2 makes a great first impression. The game's tutorial area offers a brief glimpse of a Last of Us style post-apocalyptic city, which offers some satisfying visuals. There's some excellent artwork here, especially in the rundown subway area bathed in scarlet light. Detailed levels and lighting setups conspire to create a compelling, very lived-in environment. Few titles can rival this kind of geometric density, and the artwork looks very pleasing. As I progressed further into the game though, and reached the first main area, called La Somme, the visual outcomes were more mixed. This location was a dark, 20th century city, and looked much more plain than the rich tutorial area that preceded it. Lighting here tended to give everything a bit of a grayish sheen, without especially compelling indirect illumination. This kind of dusky environment is hard to light convincingly, and the results here aren't amazing. That's probably because, while Unreal Engine 5 is indeed being used for this title, its use is somewhat limited relative to what the technology should be capable of in upcoming games. The primary UE5 tech that has made its way into Remnant 2 is the Nanite Virtualized Geometry System, which manifests in a distinct lack of LOD pop-in and an excellent level of up-close geometric detail. There's no ray tracing whatsoever here, and no use of the Lumen real-time global illumination system in either its hardware or software rendering modes. The game also seems to have Unreal's virtual shadow maps, which is evident in some of the super clean and sharp shadow detail Remnant 2 offers at close range, as well as a distinct lack of visible shadow cascades. There's no simulation of variable penumbra here though, so the shadows are uniformly sharp reducing their visual impact. Each of the game's locations seems to be composed of a series of prefabricated environmental blocks, which are integrated through a procedural generation system. Key areas in each location appear to be the same through multiple playthroughs, but the sections in between shift for each character that you create. Some of these environmental blocks can look quite appealing. These glossy, ornate fairy interiors are quite striking, with high arches and elaborate metal detailing. This science fiction themed environment was packed with plenty of detail as well, and had some nice lighting setups. Interior areas seem to fare very nicely in this game, with high fidelity models and materials. When you get up close to any given asset, you can really appreciate how fine-grained the detail can be. Other environmental blocks, like the exteriors of La Somme, proves somewhat less compelling, but mostly, the game looks quite attractive. To some extent, your mileage will vary with the way the game is presented because of its extensive procedural systems. I booted up the game on a new character after I'd played for about a dozen hours on my first and encountered a totally different first world, for instance, an ancient jungle area, with different plot elements as well. On another new character, I started on La Somme again, but this time I started in a different area and it had a very different layout to my first run on PS5. The only real caveat to this is that the procedural systems do make the game feel a little bit less cohesive than other action titles. You don't really feel a strong sense of progression as you work your way through each zone, and there aren't strong visual signposts to help you keep track of your progress you'll be finding your way through the game by consulting the in-game map for the most part, which helpfully fills in as you tackle each level. There's nothing here that looks wildly ambitious or anything, but each environment comes packed with geometric detail in a way that we didn't see in last generation efforts. 
That becomes particularly clear when we look at Remnant 2's 2019 predecessor, which shipped on last-gen consoles and PC. I think Remnant 1 is still a perfectly credible-looking Unreal Engine 4 title, but it obviously features much more restrained environments relative to its sequel. The geometry here is respectable enough, but the game looks a touch flat without a lot of detail. Remnant 2 simply packs a lot more into every nook and cranny in the game world. It's hard to imagine this level of visual improvement without targeting more powerful platforms as a baseline. Remnant 2 does have a couple of smaller issues that I think are worth touching on briefly. The game makes heavy use of screen space effects with very obvious occlusion issues when the information needed for SSR and screen space shadows is removed from view. This is hardly unique to Remnant 2, but the game relies on these techniques more than most so it can be a bit distracting at times. The game's cutscenes are often pared back in scope relative to what we typically see in games like this. They look fine enough, but don't expect lifelike characters, especially detailed facial animation or choreographed action scenes. Remnant 2 isn't a full-priced release, so some of the production values aren't quite on the same level as a contemporary big-budget title. And the cutscenes do have some odd issues at times, like very low-resolution self-shadows in this scene and these bizarre graphical artifacts that occur right after a camera cut. Though I did find that that last issue was specific to PS5. Generally speaking though, Remnant 2 is a very attractive game. The environmental art is super high quality and is realized using generous nanite powered polygonal detail. Lighting is good, enemies are visually interesting and respond convincingly to gunfire and melee attacks, and player animations feel very responsive. The game's motion blur also has a pleasingly long shutter speed even when playing at 60 FPS. Remnant 2 isn't making the most out of Unreal Engine 5, but it's a visually polished game that holds up well among the small cohort of current gen only titles. Remnant 2 ships with three visual modes on PS5 and Series X. A quality mode targeting 30 FPS, a balanced mode targeting 60 FPS, which is how we've showcased the game thus far, and a performance mode that apparently targets an unlocked frame rate according to the game. Interestingly, these modes mostly differ in graphical features, not as much in perceived resolution. The quality mode has substantially denser foliage than the other two mode options. Screen space reflections are more detailed and coherent even at a distance. Shadows are higher resolution with less breakup and artifacting. It seems like there are a range of little tweaks here and there, probably corresponding to one Unreal Engine preset level higher when you step up to the quality mode. The balanced and performance modes look just about identical on the other hand, with little to separate them in still shots. But when you start moving the camera, the performance mode runs with full screen tearing at all times, which is pretty annoying here. Unfortunately, counting a comprehensive range of rendering resolutions isn't really possible here. The motion blur can't be toggled off at the moment, making it hard to find a raw edge during gameplay. Plus, cutscenes make extensive use of post-process effects like depth of field that can render them hard to count. I was able to count out a number of shots though, and I do have some handle on how the game renders. On PS5 and Series X, the quality mode renders out at about 1296p or so, generally speaking. Balanced goes down to just above 720p at about 792p on average, and the performance mode goes down to a 720p resolution typically. Dynamic res does appear to be in play here in the quality and balanced modes, with the performance mode seeming to stick to that 720p figure. But the balanced and performance modes, and possibly the quality mode as well, seem to upsample to something in the vicinity of 1440p from those lower internal resolutions. When we compare to PC at native 1440p here, we get a very similar detail level in still shots. Initially, I suspected FSR2. But the artifact patterns on PC using FSR2 are very noticeable and distracting, and look nothing like the artifact patterns on console, which are much less noticeable. So I suspect we may be looking at Unreal's temporal super resolution here, though it's hard to be certain. That means a fair bit of image breakup in those higher framerate mode options in typical play. Though it wasn't too intrusive in my experience, sitting some distance from a large television, and the motion blur helps to hide a lot of the artifacting. In stills, all the modes look just about identical in image quality, though in motion the quality mode delivers a more stable image. 
Series S looks a lot like the other two consoles. We're getting just one mode here, which operates with similar visual settings to the other console's balanced modes. In terms of resolution, Series S is rendering at about 900p internally. But unlike the other machines, this is getting upsampled to 1080p, so the final resolve is substantially less detailed. Plus, the Series S version runs at 30fps and without any form of motion blur, so the image can look a bit choppy and somewhat aliased at times. Dropping motion blur feels like a poor choice given the 30fps update, but that's the compromise the developers have chosen for Microsoft's pint-sized console. Let's take a look at Remnant 2's performance, starting with PS5. The game's balanced mode is the default option and aims for a full 60fps, with VSync enabled. Now it does manage to hit 60 most of the time with a fast and fluid response in general gameplay, but it's far from perfect. Dips down to the 50s and 40s are possible depending on the environment, and at worst we can actually end up in the 30s. This doesn't seem to vary all that much according to the on-screen action, but it does get a lot worse in some areas. This science fiction themed laboratory seemed to cause the worst problems in my gameplay with a relatively poor performance level. Cutscenes can also drop pretty badly at times. The quality mode aims for 30 FPS instead, which predictably proves a bit easier to hit. The only real drops from 30 FPS in typical play come down to occasional single dropped frames, with the recorded frame rate usually at 29 FPS. I did find one spot in the aforementioned lab area where the game buckled a bit harder, but it's an outlier for sure. Quality mode is a reasonably consistent 30 FPS experience, though certainly not a perfect one. The final option, dubbed performance, is a bit bizarre. VSync is completely disabled for this mode, with visual settings otherwise similar to the balanced mode option. That makes for some pretty brutal screen tearing alongside the same frame rate dips we saw in the balanced mode. I really wouldn't advise turning this one on at all. I imagine some of the game's performance issues may get worse in cooperative play, which I didn't have time to test thoroughly, though most of the performance swings do seem linked to the environments rather than the on-screen action. Series X is basically identical to the PS5 for the most part. It drops frames in the same places with a very similar run of play. It still falls a bit short of a stable update in all modes, with a decent enough performance level that's coupled with some substantial dips. But there is one very curious difference. Remnant 2 effectively comes with one additional graphics option that I haven't mentioned. If you set your Xbox Series X to 120Hz output, Remnant 2 will run the performance mode with an unlocked frame rate allowing the frame rate to go higher than 60 FPS. On PS5 though, setting the console to 120Hz output doesn't affect the game at all, so it still renders in a 60Hz container and is unable to hit higher frame rates. Of course, the game still suffers from intrusive screen tearing on both consoles in performance mode regardless of the refresh rate. But when you engage VRR, it doesn't seem to affect the game at all, as it still suffers from screen tearing. So I'm not totally sure what's going on here, but at least on my display, this specific game doesn't properly work with VRR enabled, even though the television reports VRR working as usual. Series S operates in its sole visual mode with a 30 FPS target, and typical play does come in at 30 FPS, but it suffers from the same drops that we see in the other console's quality modes, and they are a bit steeper here, with extended dips a bit of a more frequent occurrence. Plus, the complete lack of motion blur makes the game feel a lot choppier than it probably should. Dropping motion blur definitely frees up resources on the GPU, but I don't think the hit to fluidity is worth it, especially as the Series S doesn't offer any high frame rate options. Remnant 2 is a great looking game. It's one of the first Unreal Engine 5 games around. And while it doesn't make complete use of the engine's feature set, it does offer a level of visual complexity that outstrips last-gen software. Whether you like or dislike the reliance on procedural systems, it's hard to deny that every handcrafted piece of Remnant 2's environments comes packed with polygonal detail and looks quite pleasing in-game. But that complexity does come at a cost. Internal resolutions tend to be a bit on the lower side, with reconstruction bringing the game to a credible high-res output in its higher performance modes at the cost of some image breakup in motion. And Remnant 2 does struggle to hold a stable performance level, 
with frame rate dips on all consoles and modes. It's definitely a compelling current generation effort, but it does seem rather heavy at times. That said, I came away impressed with Remnant 2, and if the developers can patch out some of the game's frame rate issues, it will be a very compelling technical effort. This is an attractive, technology-pushing current-gen-only title, which is a rare sight so far this generation. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, use Twitter. Thanks for watching.